I mean, he's not wrong. Hello, ghastlies and ghostlies. My name is Tibius Kine, and, um, yeah, what is the deal? with Nocturne. Now, if you've been following uh, the What's the Deal video series recently, you will know that I'm on an ongoing little uh, mini quest to categorize and criticize and catalog the older champions of League of Legends in order to sort of get an overview of where they have been left in the lore state and how much they have been, to be frank, neglected by Riot in the time since pretty much since they since they were released. Nocturne was one of the champions on my list, but Riot have managed to beat me to him. He has received a lore update, bringing him more into line with the modern state of the League of Legends universe. So let's have a look at it. There are a couple of interesting things about Nocturne, but mostly he follows a similar pattern that will be familiar again if you've been watching the Watch the Deal videos. You will have heard this spiel before. He's released into the game. He has a lore state and some story threads and stuff like that then absolutely very little to nothing is done to follow up on them for four or five years until 2014 hits, the lore retcon reboots the entire League of Legends universe, Nocturne is given a hasty rewrite to just sort of make him not completely unsuitable to fit into the new universe, and then multiple more years pass, four years to be specific, until 2018, and now he's finally receiving a lore update. Now, the process of revamping the entire League of Legends universe has been something Riot have been working on relatively quietly since 2014, but as I think I have made clear in the past, it's not, they, they've been very, very slow. <laughs> and that's one of the things I like to poke them about and criticize them about. So, Nocturne, he's finally received a lore update only, what, eight years after he was released into the game, he's finally gotten himself a, a bit of lore content. So that's nice. Let's have a look at where he started, though. Let's start with what he was before the lore retcon. This is the lore with which he was released into League of Legends. In that version, Nocturne is a sleep demon of some sort. It's not exactly clear who or what he is, except that he attacks summoners in their sleep. He attacks them, he tries to terrify them into madness or indeed into trying to just kill them. And he's been, he does this for quite a long time until on the Twisted Tree line, there's some sort of a magical interaction with a nexus that brings him into the physical world where the summoners of the Institute of War can finally capture him and study him. And what they find out is that they don't actually know what the heck is up with him and why he's doing what he's doing, but they bind him to a nexus shard and use him as a champion in the games on the Summoner's Rift. After the 2014 lore retcon, he's got pretty much exactly the same lore, except they've just, you know, scrubbed out the bits that refer to summoners and the League of Legends and the Twisted Tree line and just replaced them with other whatever will fit to just sort of act as a placeholder until they could get around to updating him, which finally they have done now in 2014. What's interesting to me about Nocturne is, on the one hand, just how much they had to change in order to get him to fit into the new lore state of the world, and yet how little the character has actually changed in the process. If you remember, and you probably do because it was like literally 10, 10 seconds ago, Nocturne originally came about as a shade, a sort of Freddy Krueger-like sleep demon that attacks only summoners, and he was tied to the Twisted Tree line and the game of the League of Legends and the Institute of War and so forth. All of that, of course, has had to be excised completely, but his fundamental nature as a sleep demon that attacks people in their sleep and, and feasts on their fear has been preserved. So, in the new lore state, there is he's tied into the origins of, or rather, to the end of the Rune Wars. Now, the Rune Wars, for those who don't know, are essentially a series of cataclysmic, almost apocalyptic conflicts that nearly destroyed the entirety of Rune Terra as various city-states and mages and powerful dictators and so on and so forth used the rune magic of Rune Terra in order to well, essentially unleash weapons of mass destruction on their opponents. Rise has been on a centuries-long quest to gather all of the runes, all of the world runes, and lock them away so that nobody can use them to do this kind of stuff anymore. But back in the day, they were part of this horrifying apocalyptic conflict. One of the other things that people tried, however, was entering the spirit realm in order to mentally attack their enemies. This was called shadow magic. So these mages entered the spirit realm and they hunted each other in their dreams and in their sleep and in their minds in terrible, terrible ways, con conjuring shadow assassins and all kinds of beasts and terrible things in the spirit realm, casting it into twilight. 
Now, you may recall there's another connection here in that Shen is one of the guardians of the spirit realm. That's certainly, that's one of the missions of the Kinku Order is to maintain balance in the spirit realm. He's called the Eye of Twilight. Presumably, there's going to be some kind of relation to this. Anyway, because of all the fighting in the Twilight, in the, in the spirit realm, well... <laughs> The entire, like, the thoughts of mortals everywhere were touched by this darkness. It sapped their morale and infected their dreams with nameless fears, hounding them day and night, driving some to commit ever more horrendous acts against their own kin. Nocturne emerges into this soup of fear and terror. Now, whether he's a demon that was created by the fear or terror, or whether it corrupted something that already existed within Spirit Realm, nobody really knows, but ultimate result is Nocturne shows up and just starts killing absolutely everything he can get his hands on. Because the only thing he understands is fear and terror and pain. Those are the only things that mean anything to him because he's a demon. And in this sense, he's being constructed very much in the same vein as characters like Evelyn or indeed uh, Tom Kench, which is something we've known for a while, that, that Nocturne is essentially, if Evelyn is a pleasure demon of a sort, Pain and Pleasure Demon, more specifically, and Tom Kench is a seduction, temptation demon. Nocturne is a fear demon. He feeds on fear. He feeds on terror and misery and, and, and pain. And so, as the Rune Wars draw to a close, and Nocturne has pretty much exterminated anyone who can enter the spirit realm at all to become a target to him, he finds another way to manifest himself into the world. The minds of sleeping mortals will eventually drift through the spirit realm, allowing him to enter their minds and give them absolutely terrifying, horrible nightmares and possibly even kill them. And in so doing, sustain himself on more fear, more terror, in the same way that Evelyn sustains herself on pain and pleasure. He's got a new short story called The Shadow Door, which illustrates this central concept. And it's got a funny little sort of Inception-y vibe to it going on, which is appropriate since we're dealing with dreams. Essentially, it tells the story of a man reading a nighttime story to his son, who's terrified of, ooh, the, the dark demons that lurk in the shadows, and his father's like, ha ha ha, son, there are no demons in the shadows, everything is fine. But then it turns out it's actually the dad who's dreaming, and he's being hunted by Nocturne, and there's like a whole, like, he wakes up as though from a nightmare, but oh my god, he wakes up into another level of nightmare dream, and then eventually Nocturne finds him and kills him. And we end the story with <laughs> the man's son in the real world, we assume, walking into his father's room to find him vanished, completely vanished and gone, with the implication being that Nocturne was hovering inside the room and has now chosen the son as his next victim. It's rather bleak and dark and terrifying, but it's also not interesting from a character perspective. And here's where we run up against one of the troubles that we have with Nocturne. Now, with, uh, with and indeed, with, with Nocturne, Evelyn, and Tom Kench, all of them, they have one overriding issue in common, which is that as characters on their own, they aren't really that interesting. They are defined specifically by one set of driving desires, one set of driving wants. Evelyn wants pain and pleasure. Tom Kench wants to, you know, tempt people and then consume them. And Nocturne wants to inflict fear on people. They don't really have any deeper motivations. There's nowhere deeper that you can go with them. There is no underlying psychology to them. They are demons. They are defined by what they are. And that presents a problem when you're trying to tell stories about a character like Nocturne, because you kind of can't. There's not, there's not that much story to tell about him, because he is only one thing, and he only does one thing. And once you've told that one story one time, there's only so much you can do to tell the story over and over and over and over and over again. Which means that for characters like Nocturne, Evelyn, and Tom Kench, and indeed any other demons in the League of Legends universe, the best you can really do with them is bounce them off other characters. At least I think so. Like, the best you can do with them is use them as a means to expose character flaws and character traits in other characters. For example, put any champion up against Nocturne and you can do the whole deep dive into exploring their darkest fears and their deepest dreams and they can sort of come up against Nocturne and have to fight to overcome their darkest terrors and so on and so forth. But Nocturne himself can't really... There's not a lot of character development you can give him because there's no character there to develop. He can be used as a tool to develop other characters characters, as it were. The same thing goes for Tom Kench. He can tempt other characters with whatever it is they desire the most, but he himself 
It's not a lot of change that can happen to a guy like Tom Kench. He is what he is. And this has always been the trouble with, like, not just in League of Legends, but with demon characters like Nocturne, like Tom Kench, like Evelyn. When you have characters that are so one note, you can you always struggle a little bit to find out what the hell you can do with them, which is why the Shadow Door, Nocturne himself doesn't really feature in the story very much. Like, he, he shows up a little bit here, like, in a, in a couple of paragraphs here near the end of the second section, and beyond that, he's not there. The story is about Abel and his father, Kelwin. It's not really about Nocturne at all. And that's not necessarily a criticism of Nocturne as a character concept, it's just when it comes to what kinds of stories can Riot tell about Nocturne going forward, well, you have to have him interacting with other characters. Like, I, the, the only thing I can really see that's interesting to do with them is to take other characters in the League of Legends universe and say, okay, if they have to fight Nocturne, what does that look like? If they have to fight against their greatest fears, what does that look like? And a character like Lucian would be an obvious target because Lucian has a lot of fears about his wife being trapped in Thresh's Lantern and so on and so forth. But he's also got the means to fight back against that kind of fear. He would be a good candidate for that kind of thing. Garen is another good one who's very much defined by ideas of courage, which, you know, provides interesting back and forth between the two characters' concepts. But outside of that, Nocturne himself? No, there's not a lot you can really do with him. So, let's talk character uh, character design. And this is kind of part of the reason why I brought up this tweet from uh, Jared Rosen, who was one of the writers at Riot. Nocturne is a thick fart with frowny eyes. And it's like, yeah, it's hard to disagree with that because Nocturne isn't actually a very good character design. He really, like, he, he's, he's a ghost with blades on his arms. He was... That, that I, I'm kind of even struggling to come up with a joke about him because he's just so basic. Like, he really... And by the way, the thing about Nocturne is we've already got a fear demon in League of Legends. We've got Fiddlesticks, who's also a demon who's specifically about fear and terror. Nocturne kind of intrudes on that a little bit. The thing that sets them apart is that Nocturne is specifically a nightmare demon. Like, he's a sleep demon, while Fiddlesticks exists much more specifically in the real world, but... There's still a hell of a lot of overlap with their concepts, and that's where I feel like Fiddlesticks much better represents the visual thematic of fear. He's a scarecrow, literally scarecrow, which is one of the oldest, like, this Batman has used the scarecrow as a symbol of fear. He's got, like, the noose around his neck, which is really freaking dark. He's got the whole crow storm kind of thing, this, this sort of swarm of crows that peck out your eyes and, and terrorize you. Like, there's a lot of, of sort of southern gothic imagery of fear going on with him, a lot of thematics to work with. With Nocturne, it's more like the reason to be scared of him is because he's got big-ass swords for arms. There's nothing, there's no mental horror, there's no psychic horror really about him. It's not, when I think of nightmares, when I think of, of terrifying dreams that I've had, what, what they tend to embody is a sense of unreality, a sense of nameless threat from which you cannot escape. This is something that's well, that's expressed really well in his kit with his ultimate that, you know, blacks out the entire map for everybody. And then suddenly he charges onto you and there's absolutely nothing you can do to stop him doing that. Like, that's a really good execution of, of the underlying concept of just nameless dread that will chase you and destroy you. But his character design is like, he's just a generic angry looking ghost dude with sword arms and some spikes because I, why does he have shoulder pauldrons but like why, why why does he have shoulder pawns and there's an attempt to kind of integrate this with the new lore state if you remember he's specifically there is a, a theory being put forward in the bio update that says oh maybe he's one of the shadow assassin constructs that were made during the rune wars to attack people in their sleep that accidentally got imbued with a lot of fear power and turned into Nocturne. So maybe that's where he got sort of the blade thing because he was created by humans to be essentially a, a shadow warrior of a kind to fight within the spirit realm. And yeah, sure, but that's not the character as he's presented either in um, the, 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 the short story that talks about specifically how he manipulates the minds and the greatest terrors of people in order to inflict his damage. It's also not the character that he becomes once he is imbued with all the power of fear. And so 
when I think of the kind of character design I would like him to have is something more along the lines of an amorphous, like a, a thing that keeps changing shape that has too many teeth or too many limbs or is a little bit too long and spindly or which moves in a strange or natural way or which stands still in a way that is not supposed to say something that is unreal, something that is uncanny, something that that looks terrifying, but not just because it has big swords for arms, but because it embodies something that is inherently terrifying, like something that, that takes random shapes at random times, but keeps looking. And this is like, I'm not going to say that this is easy to execute as a character concept, like the whole idea of a sleep demon. Like there's a reason Freddy Krueger um, is such a simple character design in a lot. Like, Freddy Krueger is, like, literally just a dude with a fedora and an ugly face and some knives for hands, and the cinematography of the, of the, of the films are doing most of the work of making the character scary, of, of giving him specific sort of horrifying sleep powers. With Nocturne, it might be kind of the same thing, where you could have a central character concept that really can't include... Like, for me, it's just... The big-ass sword arms are just too basic. Like, it's too, oh, yeah, he's dangerous because he's spiky. From a character design perspective, that's just way too obvious, right? Especially when you're dealing with a character who's supposed to be rather subtle in a lot of ways. Like, he's about to be, he's supposed to be about embodying your worst, most emotional fears, which is why when he terrifies a father and his son, what he does to the father is he terrifies the father with the visions of his son being turned into a monster before him. Like, one of the most horrifying things a parent could possibly imagine. This right here, though, yeah, he's looks dangerous, but he doesn't look scary in that traditional sense. And if, like, if you really want to stick with the majority of the old character design, I would take some notes out of the book of a character like, for instance, um, Venom. And instead of making him this very bulky, like, and also, by the way, the shoulder pauldrons and the, the blade arms and the whole thing, it makes him really bulky. It makes him really physical. It makes him really present in, in, in a very sort of tangible, definable way. I would make him much more slimy, like, like a cloud of black ink that flies across the battlefield, that sort of twists itself into knots and unnatural shapes and, you know, expands tendrils of shadow around itself in order to create weapons and stuff like that. I would really go hard on this idea of this thing doesn't take shape until it comes into contact with something that it can terrify by mimicking its worst fear. So, for instance, if, like, if you really wanted to go hardcore on a Nocturne update, like if you really wanted to create an amazing fucking champion, what you would do is create a champion that takes a different, not a completely different character model, but which takes a different physical shape depending on what he's fighting. So for instance, if he goes up against Garen, maybe he takes the model shape of Lux. Not that it changes his abilities or anything, but just that his model shapes itself into the shape of Lux, something like that. And again, from a game design perspective, that's really hard to pull off because silhouette design is a big-ass deal when it comes to clarity of game design, and you should never accidentally mistake Nocturne for another character. But, like, something where Nocturne as a character changes depending on what he's fighting. And maybe you could make it simpler than that. Maybe you could make it, like, if he fights an ADC, he turns into something that looks like a big tank that they can't kill. Or if he fights a mage, he turns into something that looks like an anti-mage of some... Like, there might be ways to do that in a more generalized sense, because the trouble is that the lore concept itself is so personalized, like Nocturne takes the shape of your worst fear, which is really, really hard to execute in a game design that needs to go into a video game that has over 150 characters in it. So I'm not saying this is easy. I'm not saying updating him to be more appropriate to his character design is, is a simple task, but I would like to see, like, just get rid of the big red sword blades and the shoulder pauldrons and the armament and stuff like that and make him unnatural. Instead of making him something physical, make him amorphous and almost smoky. Give, find some other measure of shape language to express that sense of nameless dread and fear. Because as it stands right now, he's honestly not that good. Like, he really doesn't represent fear. At least not to me.
Anyway, if you've enjoyed this video, there is a subscribe button down below. There's also a like button, and then there is the bell icon in case, you know, you actually want to subscribe because YouTube and... I mean, the bell icon doesn't even work anymore either, so... Hell if I know. Just, just try. <laughs> I check my channel every once in a while. Maybe there's a new video. Who knows? YouTube might not show you. Uh, if you want to support the channel, or me, help me pay for food and, you know, pants... Pants are good. I haven't bought new pants in a long time. Uh, if you want to help me buy some pants at some point, then uh, there's a Patreon that you can go and check out. And if you want to support with a dollar or whatever whatever you might be able to, well, I'd be very grateful to receive it. If not, of course, that's completely okay. Just, you know, thank you for watching the video this far. <sighs> if you have disliked this video, well, of course, that's um, your right as a person. And there is a dislike button down below that you can click on. Uh, and I can't really prove this with science necessarily, but I've heard from people that have clicked on the dislike button that when they click it, like, they'll, they'll be fine for a few days, but then they'll start having dreams. Really, like, just weird, not not scary dreams, just weird dreams, like, like when they're walking down the street and they're naked for no reason. Nobody seems to notice, but they notice, and yet they're not cold even though it's winter. And that just kind of happens, and then they wake up, and then they have another dream where, like, all of their teeth start, like, falling. They, they bite down, and it's, like, biting down on hard candy, and you can kind of hear your teeth just going <coughs> crunch, crunch, and ah, it's really... You wake up, and you feel weird in your mouth, and then you have to go to the bathroom and check your teeth, and it's like, ah, you brush them because you're kind of terrified. Maybe you've got a tooth infection, and then you have to go back to bed, and then you have another strange dream where, like, your mother is there, but she's not your mother, and she's got, like, a hat on, but the hat doesn't like the hat is like evil and it doesn't like you but you can't tell her that the hat is evil because you can't talk because you don't have your voice anymore and you just know that the hat is evil but you can't you can't express it because you, you, when you try to talk your voice comes out like a tiny whisper nobody can hear and then you're in a labyrinth and you know there's a troll somewhere in the labyrinth and it's not it's not an evil troll it's not going to hurt you but you just you just know it's going to pop out from like a wall and scare you and you just know it's going to happen so you're walking through the labyrinth and you just know the troll is going to be there but the troll never shows up and then you wake up and you just and you don't know if you're awake or whether the troll is still going to like jump out of your door and scare you and it just freaks you out for the whole day and you just don't and then eventually you just have to go on a YouTube video and cry about it because you haven't slept for like 168 hours and I don't even know if this video is real anymore. Thank you very much for watching.